What's going on? I'm Dylan from Saturday Morning Props where I teach everything from 3D printing tips and tricks to full cosplays and things like that. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Creality K2 Plus. I print a lot of big things like armor sets, full-size droids, and life-size Pokemon. So clearly the Creality K2 Plus was going to be a printer that I was interested in. It has a 350 by 350 build plate, and so that is a very big volume to be able to print. This is actually not a sponsor review. I wasn't given any money, and I did not have to send this video over to Creality. I can say whatever I want about this thing, and I want to give you my honest opinion. We are going to compare this thing to the Bamboo. We're not going to shy away from that. We're going to talk about both of the products. And that being said, like, I love the Bamboo printers. Right next to my Creality K2, I have three Bamboos, two P1Ss and the X1C. I see a lot of people saying that Creality's copying the bamboo and it's like, isn't that what we want? For the last two years, every two months, I feel like everyone keeps talking about them announcing the next big one. The next big one's gonna come and, and every two months it doesn't happen. But Creality's been listening to the community and you're gonna see with a lot of these features, it's everything people have been asking for. The question is, does the quality match up? And I think you're gonna be really happy with the answer. I'm not one of those engineering scientific review types, so just know that. We're not gonna be talking about tolerances and microns and all these different things. This is a realistic printer review for what you can expect as a consumer. This is about what it's actually like using the K2 and what my results have been like. I'm a real user who likes to print props and just enjoy 3D printing. We're gonna showcase print quality and things like that. So if that sounds good, let's get into this. If not, but if you have any questions about this machine, I'll do a follow-up video. So drop your comments down below and let me know what things do you wanna see or test it or anything like that. It's something that maybe I didn't talk about in this video that you're interested in. So let's start with the unboxing. I literally didn't do an unboxing video because it was so simple. I filmed everything and then realized I had nothing to show for a video. It seriously is open it up, put it on there, you unscrew like four bolts, you attach the screen, and you plug in some PTFE tubes. It is ridiculously simple. If you've built one of the bamboos, it is identical to that. You unscrew the bed, you plug in some tubes, and that thing is ready to roll. The printer is extremely heavy though. For me, I had to bring it up here into the studio where it's not even going to exist. It exists in another room. And it was so heavy trying to get it in here by myself to get it onto the table to start filming all of those things and then take that and move it into the other room. It is a big solid printer. I can tell you though, when unboxing it, it was a great experience and everything feels very high quality. Next, let's talk about the slicer. Creality has their own slicer and it probably pairs up with the machine a whole lot better, but I actually use Orca Slicer. It's because I have a multitude of machines, so it's nice to be able to have a few that are on there and be able to use that slicer that I'm already comfortable with. And the K2 Plus already has a profile on there. I haven't gotten the Orca Slicer to connect to the K2 for a remote downloading, but I just use the USB drive that it comes with. And then it's super easy on the interface of the K2 to take your G code from the USB drive and then you can choose what colors compare to what. So if you're doing multicolor slicing, you can just choose exactly what roll and what slot is that color that the G code is showing. And since we're talking about color changing, let's talk about the CFS system. That's their color changing system that is identical to all the other machines. It's got a nice LED screen that shows the relative humidity and it has this awesome pressure bar that's on the top of the lid that keeps tension on the roll. So when they get lighter, it's putting slight pressure down on it so that they don't skip around in the CFS. I did a short form video where I use sockets inside of cardboard spools to weigh them down a little bit so that they don't hop around in the AMS when it gets low. This spring-loaded pressure system is awesome and gets rid of that need for that. Creality is also now coming out with spools that have their own RFID system in them. So it will know exactly what filament type is in the loader, or if you're using a different brand, you can just type in what it is, whether it be a PLA, a matte PLA, a silk PLA, and then choose. But most of the settings are gonna come from the G-code in the slicer in the first place. The CFS is one of my favorite parts of this whole thing, not because I do a lot of color changing, because I actually don't do a lot of color changing. But with a printer that big, you're going to be doing parts that are going to take more than a thousand grams of filament. So now that you can do two rolls, three rolls, four rolls, you can do very big prints that utilize that large format and go through the whole thing. I don't know if you can tell what this is, but this is from a Digimon. I'm doing it life size and that head is going to take up the entire build volume of this printer. And it's going to take over a thousand grams of filament. But now I can put in two rolls of the same matte pink PLA and let it go through and I don't have to sit there and watch it. I don't have to change it over or anything like that. 
it's going to continuously do that. There are big two kilogram and three kilogram spools out there, but a lot of these printers don't have spool holders that let you run a big filament like that. And those spools usually only come in black or white. But now I can do large colored prints that are over a thousand grams and being able to use different colors of filament if I need to run out. So say you aren't printing something in the color it needs to be, but you have a little bit left over yellow or red or green, you can put them all in there, tell the CFS that it's the same color and just run it all the way through and use up every ounce of that filament. When you start doing that, you realize how awesome it is being able to just empty all of your spools. But I have done color changing as well. This is my pit droid here and I decided to do the whole head and being able to do the color changing here was awesome. But this is about the extent of color changing that I like to do usually because this is one where it does all of this layer one color, it does one purge and then switches colors and goes up. I don't do a lot of the ones where it swaps between a million color shifts all the way back and forth. I do it sometimes. But now let's talk about more features that I like about the K2 itself, not just the color changing system. Clearly the build volume, a 350 by 350 build plate. Technically I think it's 370 by 370, but the build area is 350 by 350. That is a significant increase over the bamboos. The K1 was 300 by 300. It was a good increase, but it wasn't a big enough increase to where I would utilize it that much. I would use the bamboos that anything that would fit on 256 by 256, which is a lot of the helmets do, but the things that needed to go over that often were still even too big for 300 by 300. And so I'd have to go over to something like the Elgood Neptune 3 Max that had an even bigger build plate. So that middle ground of the K1 Max at 300 by 300 kind of missed its mark for me but 350 by 350 is amazing. It allows me to jump from that printer over here and do a lot of things that now I don't have to go over to a big bed slinger. I now have this awesome big box printer. It's a simple one and pretty common these days, but a textured build plate. Again, the K1 Max came with a smooth plate. This one comes with a textured one more like the Ender 3 V3 Plus. I appreciate the grip that you get from it and it works really well. This one might be my absolute favorite part of this new printer is the hot end does not have that locking mechanism. If you've used the K1 Max, the K1, or the K1C, anything like that, or the Ender 3 V3, there's this switch at the top that you have to lock and unlock the filament. So when you load it in, you have to unlock it, stick it down in there. Half the time I have to move the PTFE tube to get it in there and then lock it back into place, hit extrude, get it to go through all that. No more of that. With the CFS and things like that, you can just put the filament into there, load it through, and then it goes through and it loads when it needs it. It has been so nice. Because half the time I either have to leave the glass door of the top of the K1 Max off so that we could reach in and do all that or everything like that, it just, it was a pain for me. But now the K2 has fixed that issue and it's wonderful. Another great thing, the quick change nozzles. So you can take the nozzle completely out without having to take everything apart. On my K1 Max, I used a micro Swiss conversion kit that changed the hot end to where I could unscrew the nozzle and screw in a new one. Now the K2 just does that. Another simple one, but they're just listening to the complaints that people have. The door opens up wider. Instead of it stopping right here, it opens up wider. Instead of you having to 3D print some sort of mechanism to open up the door more and do all of that, it opens up wider. I just hope you guys understand that Creality is listening to us. The, the community has been asking for all of these different things and they're doing that. So whether they're copying the good, but then they're improving on the things that we want too. Another one, I don't know if this fixes print quality or whatever, but it feels like it does is it has two fans on each side of the enclosure. On the bamboos, we only have the one on the one side. Here we have it on both sides now. And the print quality is coming out great. It regulates the enclosure well. It's just a great little improvement. If you have an X1C, you know that when you print, there can do this like really long test strip and it like kind of looks at that. The K2 also has a calibration strip for the flow of the filament and it does this long thing and then it scans over to see if the flow is right and it has been giving me amazing first layers and then just great print quality. Let's talk about things to keep in mind though. The power consumption of this thing. Again, I'm not some sciencey tech reviewer, but for me, in my small office, if I run two bamboos, everything's fine, no light flicker, no nothing. If I run just the K2, even by itself, I do get a small flicker in my LED lights. It's not a big issue, but it is pulling more power for sure. I can still run three bamboos and the K2 all at the same time and I don't lose power in the house or the breaker doesn't trip or anything like that. But I can tell that I can run those other ones and there's zero power flicker. And if I run this one, I do get a faint one. However, 
I have a Sovel SV08, which is also a 350 by 350 build plate, and I'll be doing a comparison of these two printers for sure. But the Sovel, that pulls a thousand watts right off the bat. When it tries to heat that bed, it goes crazy. And that makes my lights flicker like a monster. This is way less than that, and I still prefer the power of the K2 way over the Sovel SV08 for sure. Next is noise. The printer itself is very quiet. The CFS though is pretty loud. When it's doing the color changes and all of that, it's pretty loud. This is not a printer that I'm going to be putting in an open living space and things like that. This stays in the office. But with that door shut, I can't hear it at all. Things like the K1 Max or the Ender 3v3, both of those were loud printers for me. Even with the door closed, I could hear them going and it was quite loud. The K2 Plus is fantastic, super quiet, door shut, I can't even tell the printer's going. It also has this weird beeping idle like when the lights of the CFS go, you can hear a deet, 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 deet every time it does a little flash of the lights and it, it idles the entire time that you leave it on. So when the bamboos aren't being used, they're, they're silent. When the K2 is turned on, it makes a noise, like it has a fan noise constantly. It's not anything bad, but it's just weird that it stays and idles and sounds like it's working harder than the other ones in a resting position. All right, let's talk quality of this printer. I needed this thing to be better than the K1 Max. I wanted it to be as good as the bamboos. Everyone keeps talking about the comparison and, and you know, saying, oh, they're copying. That's great. I want that bamboo quality on a big platform. And I will tell you, they delivered. The K2 has been amazing. One of these was printed on the bamboo and one of these was printed on the K2. I've been doing side-by-side -side prints of the same thing and you can't tell the difference. That is a great thing. They've matched the quality and sometimes it even beats the other machines. If you see this weird curling on the corners here, that's the X1C. This is my K2. It actually did that better and it started the spheres better. These were printed in the same exact orientation. But if you look at this print, you will never know which pieces come off of the K2 and which come off the X1C. That could honestly be the whole video. Even if it didn't beat the X1C, if it just matched the quality of it, I was going to be so happy. Even it came close. You know, the fact that it has a bigger build volume and came close to the quality, I would have been happy, but this is just as good and sometimes better. And the prints finished faster, negligibly, like maybe 10, 15 minutes. Speed isn't the biggest thing for me at all because I can't finish props as fast as the printers can do them. I get a huge backlog, so speed isn't important to me, but if that's important to you, the quality is what's important to me, and the quality has just been phenomenal. I've been so happy with this printer. And there's another thing that makes the quality sometimes better. It's print orientation. Because when you're using the bamboo, sometimes you have to lean things back weird because it's not gonna fit in the build volume. So you've gotta put it in an awkward angle so it creates more overhangs and things like that. You aren't restricted by most things with the K2 because you can angle it any way you need to because it's so big. So you can give it the best print orientation and get an even better print. When directly comparing them, I try to put them in the exact same print orientation, calculating the same angles for everything. But if I wasn't doing a comparison, I could put the K2 in better positions because it's bigger. The only thing I can't say about the K2 is longevity. We don't know that, so that's just not fair. We have no idea about reliability and things like that. But everything that we can do and test right now, this thing is amazing. You're going to be so happy with this machine. I know they have shipping delays for some of the pre-orders and things like that, and there's been a little bit of a fiasco with that. I'll have an affiliate link in the description here that you can support the channel by by using for sure. And I think the ones without the color changing systems are shipping within like three days. But if it has a color changing system, I think they're a little delayed right now, which is expected with a brand new item where, you know, it's hard to know how many people are gonna want. I'm loving this machine and I really think that it's a great printer. Like I said, I also have the Sovel SV08, which is another 350 by 350 Core XY printer. And yeah, we can do a comparison of those two things and I can show you that. But one is definitely significantly more than the other and it has a lot more amenities than the other. But if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments down below. And again, if there is any questions of things that I didn't cover well or things that you're interested in with the machine, something that you need to be tested or whatever before picking one up, let me know in these comments so I can do a follow-up video for you guys. I hope this video was everything that you needed to see for buying one or whether you need to pass on one or whatever, whether you're still waiting out for a bigger one from the other company and everything like that.
but I hope this video really helps you out I'm trying to share everything that I know and I've experienced so far. Hopefully it helps you make decisions for Black Friday or, you know, the holidays and things like that. I'll catch you in the next one. Love you guys. Peace.